Je je also known as Volenvine here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be dabbing down this week. Anyway, this week I have a very special guest, Skane Deer. Hi, <laughs> I, my name is Ellie. Well, yeah, also known as Skane Deer or Skane Deer Knits. She has the Skane Deer Knits podcast on YouTube, which I will pop in the doobly do up here so you can just pause now and go check out her podcast yeah and then come back and watch us but anyway this is not the normal format <laughs> of the podcast <laughs> it's just been vogue knitting live weekend this past weekend that's and, why i'm here and that's why ellie's in town and yeah. she's joining me on the podcast yeah so yeah come all the way from london i am originally from norway but i live in london which i've done for eight years and that makes it just very easy just like pop over to New York sometimes when there's a yarn show and I get to hang out with friends and just yeah and so. for your birthday as you do oh there's that I turned 30 yesterday yeah. so uh. yay. <laughs> yay I couldn't think of a better birthday it was pretty good yeah we hung out yesterday we had dinner it was like an amazing view all over Brooklyn and Manhattan and just it was good yeah, yeah. good food too um but yeah I thought you know Ellie would come on the podcast so we can talk about Vogue Knitting Live yes. and what we're working on and just general banter that knitters banter about so yeah. do you remember anything from Vogue Knitting Live I really don't it was a blur well it's you went a haze <laughs> it, was, it all happened so quickly uh, it did it was really yeah. quick I was there for all three days and you were there for Saturday I just went Saturday because I'm a hardcore introvert yeah. and I was like I'm just gonna go for Saturday me too, but I ignore my introvert tendencies and just like max it out and end up flatlining at the end of the whole thing. <laughs> but it's good, so, we made it, we survived. Yeah, we yes, survived. Yes, yeah. It was really good. I it was so so much fun to meet everyone and get some 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 a little bit of yarn, just a couple of skips. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. You went you went Friday and then you went we both went Saturday and then yeah. you went again on Sunday. <laughs> I was dead at home. I just remember <laughs> us sitting on the floor most of the time during Saturday. We just like sat various places on the floor, which is like very trippy carpet. Oh, yeah. Vogue. Very like, yeah. It's um, super trippy. <laughs> if that's like one of my pet peeves about like event spaces, it's the carpet. Yeah. It's I, rem a, <laughs> I remember. It like pops up and attacks you kind of. It's just that pattern. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a carnival on the floor. Yeah. Or like a, a clown just vomited everywhere. And that. Anyway. I digress. I think that's pretty much what happens every year at Vogue Knitting Live. It's like, it's this huge event space, you do your yarn shopping, and then you find your friends, and you just kind of come together. Yeah. Yeah. Camp like, there are seating areas, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay to be on the floor, too. It's fine. It's relaxing, you know, you just yeah. charge. And then we found a nice corridor where there's, like, a nice breeze right by the bathroom. That was pretty good, because we were classy as fuck. Are you sure what you bought were? Um... Like yeah, I guess. See, I promised <laughs> that I would not buy anything at Vogue Knitting Live, but, you know, I cannot resist. So, yeah, um, I ended up coming away. I stopped by the Magpie Fibers booth. Uh, they, I think they were sharing it with, like, um, Spin Cycle, the Spinsters. Or they were just popping up in there. Yeah, I don't. I think they were, like, doing it together because they so. were doing both yarns yeah. conveniently for some. How convenient. <laughs> But yeah, it's like I did the whole rounds of the floor. It, um, it, it was a huge, huge event space. But yeah, normally I just like to do the rounds and then anything that sticks in my mind, I usually go back and make make a purchase. And Magpie was definitely the one that like stood out the most to me, yeah. um, especially because I was kind of like convinced that I need to cast on a stone crop by Andrea Mary. I'll try and pop a photo of it here so you know what I'm talking just about. put it on my face. On, on Ellie's face, wearing a stone crop. <laughs> there we go. It's Magpie Fibers. It's like this dark brown black and it's domestic fingering 100% superwash merino their wool. Their bases. So squidgy and nice. Yeah their you bases know. and their colors I mean I am not gonna be able to show the yarn that I bought because I packed my suitcase I'm flying home today uh, but there may have been a plural sweater quantities of magpie in in there. Yeah they I have heard people talk about magpie Obviously, from my position in, in Europe, I hear people in America talk about them, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, I guess it's just, you know, the latest dyer, yeah, and 
I'm like, I get That's it awesome. now. I get it. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> like it's it's good stuff. I an amazing colours and it was really hard to choose just three really. I got two skeins of these, so hopefully I'll have enough to make the stone crop. Um and then I also got I actually cast it on. So I'll show you. I cast it on, it's happening. But uh, while I was there, I also purchased two skeins of Spin Cycle. Um, however, the lighting there is just not good. So when I came home and looked at my Spin Cycle booty, it was like, Paul, which is a booty, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, <laughs> it just wasn't in my wheelhouse of my taste. So I'm probably going to end up destashing this. So this is their Cold Comfort colorway, which is really pretty. It's just got like a lot of like candy. Yeah, it's very like sweet looking, and it looks yeah. a lot more muted in person, like in, mm. in at the venue, and then still think it'll work out. But you have to like how you have to feel it. I know. So, so yeah. So I did what I normally do, and I panic ordered. <laughs> I went on their website and I panic ordered another colorway that I thought would go a lot better with this. So anyway, this might be a destash. Um, more on that later. But anyway, what yeah. are you working on? Oh, I basically, I mean, I'm trying to be little bit better at working on my current works in progress um that's not to say i'm not like dreaming about casting on one of my magpie purchases but i did deliberately bring like some languishing whips with me for my trip so that i would have to work on them and not fall to temptation so i brought with me two projects here that are in kind of various states of orb ish um to start with the one i worked with the most so this is a sweater I cost on at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Like I bought this pink hazel bag there, really cute with like fox. I don't know, but is it fox? Probably not. Use your imagination. Uh, <laughs> we'll try and but, instill yeah. a still or something. <laughs> B roll. Yeah. So I got this yarn as well there. This is Lalland yarn by Di Gilpin. It's so soft. And it comes up beautifully with this whole like light setting that Kristen's got going on here. And it's this like kind of dark. Yeah, that. Uh, so I'm doing a very simple stockinette yoke. This is a pattern by Tina Hoagland. She's Sticky Zilla usually online. Um, You're gonna have to spell that for me and I'll put it in the down yeah, bar. I'll do <laughs> that. <laughs> that. <laughs> um, do you remember what it's called? I'm not entirely sure I do, uh, <laughs> but I know the designer. Description That's the main thing. Uh, and I'm on big time sleeve island. I usually boast about that I, I like I don't experience sleeve island. It doesn't happen to me because I use these circulars and it's like I sixteen to... inch. Like I I like big sleeves anyway, so I can cram it in. But these have not felt very quick, and I'm not even half. I may be over halfway now. Like yeah, like but it's past the elbow. Um, but it's feeling very slow. So I worked a bit on the body as well, but also that hasn't actually, it's like <laughs> looped up. <laughs> so I love the neckline, it's just yeah. like... It probably will block up and end up being more crew necky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do love that it seems to have a good shoulder fit. A lot of the times you can look a bit triangular and you mm-hmm. can't fit your shoulders in. This is looking very promising. So it's just something nice and wearable and simple and soft next to skin friendly every day. It's really, yeah. really, so it has a really nice hand to it. Yeah. That, that's feels, that. It feels like merino. Like, it almost has like cashmere, yeah. but like it also has like a, like a lanolin type yeah. of feel it, to it's, it. It's just crazy soft and it's composed of these two plies of two plies. <laughs> so it's technically four ply, but the two major strands are like just loosely plied together. So the fabric you get is something that reminds you of something where you have held two yarns together. Uh, only you haven't, because it's got that like plump feeling to it, and it's just squish, squish, squish. Okay, there, there mm-hmm. there's that one. Um, yeah. Do you have any other um, stuff and things? Actually, yes. <laughs> I actually cast on um, a what is it? Shift along hat by Andrea Nari. It's all about the Andrea Nari pattern today, I guess. Ah. Um, but yeah, this was the. She wasn't there though. She wasn't. We were so sad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we would have fan girled. We would. We would. We, we, we did have. so many, we did so much fangirl. <laughs> oh, you not tell you, that was a big one. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a big one. I was, I was, yeah. Yeah, we Toby, met, if like, you're watching. Uh, I don't know if you are, I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, I hope so. So awesome. We'll tag her. her. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think I scared her mom a little, but I saw her standing there like, hi, and then her mom is just like, has like deer in headlights. I'm like, you don't know me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just smiled creepily at her, as you do. do. Yeah. I think, you know, creepy smile. Yeah. It's all understandable. That's like the crazy yeah. thing about these events. Like you suddenly like, those, in the knitting world, those big names, you, mm-hmm. they're just like walking around and it's... No big deal. Cra- yeah. No big deal. <laughs> and it's like, what I find like, this is going to sound really cheesy, but like, when you design or die, like you just do it from home and there's something when you go to a show and people you actually meet in the flesh yeah. know who you are. Especially if they're like people you look up to and, and, and anyone is like, suddenly there's like pang of validation of what you do every day. <laughs> it's so surreal. And it's like, <laughs> it feels very, very nice. <laughs> so it was all, all around really, really fun. Oh, and I we I also ran into um, Jennifer Steingast. Yes, which was really like, that was nice. I still have yet to cast on one of her patterns, but I'm in love with everything she does. And I just you know, I think I was just so excited to meet her. I'm one of those people that you know, yeah. quintessential fangirl. Like I'm like hello, and then I literally <laughs> ran into her. Like I was just like walking, and then suddenly she's like there. Yeah. I'm like, hey. Oh, <laughs> so that that was yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing a, an interview with her where I was like, oh, I remember she's kind of shy. I'm like, mm-hmm. dial it back, Kristen, dial it back. <laughs> but, yeah, I did but anyway, I also want to say thank you so much to everybody who came up and said hello. It, yeah, again, it's just like really, really yeah. warm, fuzzy feelings. And yeah. it was just so awesome getting to chat with viewers of the podcast. And even just like, we were like sitting on the floor, like knitting by the yeah. bathroom. It was just like, people just came up and were like, yeah. hello. <laughs> And they're like, oh, don't get up, don't get up. I'm like, like, no, we want to get I will. up. I just, it, it just hurt in all my legs, but oh, it's, I will, I will. I think after yeah. a while, it's like walking around, you just start to glaze over, oh. and you're like, hello. <laughs> it's surprisingly exhausting, these events. Like, your feet mm. are aching at the end of one day, and you all you're doing is, like, standing and walking. Yeah. But it sneaks up on you. You yeah. don't realize it until yeah. you come home, and you just, like, crash, and you're like, holy cow. Yeah. Worth it. Yeah worth it i digress <laughs> as i do but um yeah i cast on the shift along hat by andrea maori hopefully it'll focus but yeah again i'm using some <laughs> st- i'm using quince and co from stash i think it's working. their it's their sabine colorway on the chickadee which is a sport weight and then this is another skein of spin cycle dyed in the wool payback the colorway payback uh that i got to cast on the stone crop and then changed my mind so I really like this colorway, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to put it in a hat, and Bob's your uncle, you know, so, really enjoying it. Is that the same you're going to use for the, the cardigan? Uh, no, I went, I picked out, like, another colorway, I think it's their Tough Love colorway from the mm. website, which is a one of a kind, so I'm, I'm very, very excited for that to come in the mail, but um, this hat is really fun, it's, like, very conversational, I have to pay attention a little, you know, every now and then to make sure I'm knitting the right stitch, but so far it's, you know, oh, it's nice knit. So, yeah. more on that later. I need to knit more hats. I never do a hat, but I should. It's I have incredible. all these hat plans, but. Yeah, I love them. So, I've got a project. Yeah, sure, sure. But yeah. I kind of started to, I had deliberately brought this for this purpose because Monday after the whole VKL thing, I was horizontal. Like, I was just, I was with all, every intention just staying in bed in the Airbnb I was renting and just, I went for like one walk to just see the view to Manhattan because it was really cool. Um, but mostly just sat in bed and like binged a whole TV season of something and picked up this project that I kind of sort of mm. was test knitting for Mina Philip of Knitting Expat. Um, only I told her I am completely unreliable. I will only be knitting this for like the optics. I probably won't be a very useful actual test knitter. And she was like, it's fine, go knit it. And I had the yarn that she'd used. Although I will say her burgundy is, I can't top that. But this is a really nice sort of bottle it's green cute. kind of. Noticing a theme with the peacock. Yeah, I do like that. I mean, it's the same color as my skirt, actually. I've got this like tartan in this color. <laughs> um, it's called the Yorkville, I believe. And it's top down. It's a sort of set in sleeve, but it's sort of at the edge of the shoulder. So you get that sort of cozy drop sleeve feel to it. Yeah. I really am enjoying the construction of it. I. Like a square neckline, isn't it? It is yeah. really nice. It's sort of square. Oh, the back is like. I suppose yeah. I think I am to pick up and do something. 
bow neck that and I don't actually remember. So right now I'm just working a stitch pattern down to the underarm and try to like hold it a bit closer so you can see the beautiful stitch pattern. So it's quite memorizable. I really am just trying to replicate what I've done for the back so I can join it under the arm and it will be smooth sailing from what there on. Is that? This is Green Mountain Spinnery, which is very special because I bought it when I was here last time, two years ago, for Vogue Knitting Yay. Live. Uh, <laughs> You've so, come full circle. Yeah, so who knew this yarn would actually get to return to this very place? Um, so it's like, yeah, a beautiful bottle green with like these blue tweeds in there. So is this going to focus? Who knows? It did it. There so we go. you get the idea. It's beautiful, it's isn't it? so pretty. Yeah. So that's happening. Um, I really do like the reflex yeah. blue yarns. I'm going to yeah. stock up next year or it's, something. This is going to sound weird, but I've talked about this on my podcast before. It's very elastic. It's only mm -hmm. these two plies, but if you do this, it's like oh. bouncy and... You know, like, it's sort of the kind of thing you take for granted, but it makes it very comfortable to knit with, because... It's like give. It yeah, like if it, it doesn't have that give, it can be... You can actually get repetitive strain injury from it, whereas this is like... It's like, like, a, it's like <laughs> sort of like a rubber band. It's like shock absorption for knitters. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So that's wow. actually really helping in the whole enjoyment of, awesome. of things. So, yeah, those are the kind of two most active projects of mine that I've had on this, on this trip. Yay. I have one more, if you'll indulge me. Yes, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what this is. This is so exciting. I think I showed it to you. Are you gonna, yeah, I showed oh, it. Oh yeah, you did. So, and I laid my eyes on this pattern when I came up on my Ravelry feed. I'm like, I have to cast that on mm -hmm. in my Dragon Tears colorway. Oh, that color. um, and I saw so many versions of these floating around Vogue Knitting Live as samples, mm -hmm. and hopefully you'll be able to see this, but... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is the Sorel uh, pullover by Wood and Pine, and I've seen that yoke everywhere it's just lately. So yeah. cool. Um, it took me a little time to wrap my brain around the stitch pattern and everything, but now it's super intuitive, and I really don't need to look at the chart anymore, um, except for like when I have to increase my thing. Um, yeah, but otherwise it's mm. like a super easy, simple knit. Um, I'm using my hand-dyed yarns, well done yarns, in, <laughs> as you do, uh, holding together a strand of my Nouveau Base, which is Single Ply Merino, and Ghost Lace, which is my mohair lace blend, so. So fluffy. So fluffy. It's like fluff galore. I can't, I can't escape the mohair. <laughs> Just, what is my life? I don't know. I, I never thought I would, like, fall down the mohair rabbit hole, if that way you say it. Yeah, the mohair rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought it would happen to me. <laughs> and yeah, I did the no frills and it was done. Oh, yeah, no, I just don't. I still have to cast one of those on. Mm. I might do another one. Who knows? Yeah. Or I've thought about doing like the impulse factor by Karen Tempera because that's like just make up a raglan with whatever gauge a stitch yeah. count you want. Like, What's it called just, again? Uh, improv. So it's oh, improv. Okay. Basically, just a recipe. You. Based on your yarn weight and gauge, you just calculate mm. based on the width you want for the back of the neck. I always recommend eight inches. Mm. And based on that, you can just calculate how many stitches to cast on. And from there, I actually don't use the recipe. I just keep yeah. on increasing until I'm happy with both the yoke depth and the actual fit for my body, just trying it on with you know interchangeable yeah. cables. And then you just kind of wing it and just make something that works. You're like a sweater knitting whiz. I mean, <laughs> she's the designer of sweaters. So, um, yeah, I, I still have to like educate myself on how all that, that math works and everything. Yeah, but I think that's the good thing about that. You yeah. don't really have to math it. You just kind of memorize it's it. It's like a try on and yeah. You either, kind of wing yeah, it. Yeah. Use your gut, gut instinct. I think I did that way before I designed garments. So I'm kind of like confident that that's See, I think that's yeah. the key. It's like when you, you know, if you have a background of, you know, experimenting and just going off on your own and modifying patterns, mm. um, that's like a really great foundation. I agree. For Absolutely. Designers. Like for people who are like wondering if like, oh, can I design garments? And I'm like, if you're the kind of person who can't help yourself from modifying the garments of other people that you knit, you probably have a very good yeah foundation mm -hmm. to start like i think if you don't do that it's going to be a lot harder yeah like me <laughs> I, I like yeah once in a blue moon i'll go off but like mm -hmm. for the most part for me when it's like designing i do like the whole mix and match thing mm -hmm. and, and 
that type of improv, I guess. Yeah, that works. Yeah. There's no right or wrong way. Yeah. Do you yeah. have anything else? I think that's all I have for knitting content. I mean, I finished my birthday dress, <laughs> which I'll talk about it in another episode because I've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. But yeah. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, really. I've got nothing. Yeah. I've got this beautiful little plane. That's nice. Gonna, gonna wear it. It's gonna be good. <laughs> it's an overnight flight, though, right? It's it is, good. yeah. Plan is to, like, sleep there and, like, wake up and yeah. be all good and ready for London, but I'm probably gonna have a lot of naps that day. Do you sleep well on planes? No. No. And last time I was sure I was gonna die. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm always scared of flying, but you know when you're asleep, you know, like, your judgment is a bit so-and-so, so, -and -so, so yeah. you, you've got turbulence, but you're kind of sleepy, and you're like, this is bad, this is bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, last time I was on a plane, I got sat next to this woman mm. who just opened up to me about like, her whole life story, and she went to the bathroom, she came back, I just had my eye mask on, <laughs> earplugs, I'm out. <laughs> good thinking, good thinking. Is there something you didn't get to experience this trip that you wish you did? More yarn shops. Oh, Definitely okay. want to go to more yarn shops. I mean, I think I've covered most of them. I think you'll look at a quick review. So yeah, that's yes, that. <laughs> please do. So, like, kind of my verdict of the, the New York and Brooklyn yarn shops, just completely, subjectively, I think my number one... There is some good competition here, it's not easy judgment, but I think number one for me is Brooklyn General. That's like where I go in, I'm like, I could potentially buy everything here. I could, I could potentially yeah. move in there and yeah. just be happy. So that was, that's a, a difficult shop for me to leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I really do like Argyle. I went there yesterday and only reason I didn't actually buy any yarn there, I bought a little booklet, um, was because I thought my suitcase was too heavy. It's not. I ha I could potentially buy like four kilos worth of yarn that I haven't, so like, yeah. regrets. Uh, but Argyle is really nice and I love the whole neighbourhood, it's like next to Prospect Park, it's just great. I also really like Knitted City, it's like the kind of shop that has everything for everyone. Like they cater to all knitting needs and preferences and price ranges, they're really good really like string thing it's mm -hmm. a great like community knitting shop i always really enjoy being there and i think they have they win for knit nights because they have oh that backyard God, yeah. they are like a great at events they do yeah. like full scale events they're really fun i'm gonna have to go to one of their knit nights though because yeah. i totally want to hang would. out in the backyard i would if i can great space <laughs> yeah i did actually go it's coming back to me now i did go after the first long knitting live night uh and I was so sleepy. I was still jet lagged. So <laughs> it's the best time to buy yarn. Terrible idea. <laughs> um, we had like the crankiest cab driver took the big detour and then yelled at us for it. So, like, yeah. Anyway, New York. New York. Uh, come to it. <laughs> what else is there of yarn shops? I I like Anna and Co, but I actually haven't been there this time around. I took a very quick visit in Woolen in Brooklyn. Um, Pro Sewer so is like a big sort of legendary yarn shop. Yeah. It's not quite like kind of my taste, but I do love the like Brooklyn tweed shelf. Yeah, there. it's very I, shishy, yeah. very high end. Like I do regret not going there this time because like they have Quarry by Brooklyn Tweed. Yeah. I'm like, we don't get that in London, and they have Liberty Fabric. <laughs> yes. Well, Brooklyn General also has Liberty Fabric. Oh my god, yes, yes. yes. I'm not allowed near Liberty Fabric anymore. <laughs> Lion Brand, I popped by Lion oh. Brand. That's a really nice one. They got high, high needles. You also went to Michaels, right? I did. I went to Michaels. <laughs> that counts. It, it, found, it, counts. it found me, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, and there's some really good like pure wool yarns in there. That yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think that's all we have to share. That is our <laughs> VKL recap. <laughs> and um, no, I'm so excited you could yeah come on. Thanks the show. for having me here. Yeah, thank you. We don't have the matching flea cardigan thing today because no, this don't. wasn't as planned. But yeah, if yeah. you tune in last year, I'll <laughs> pop it in the doobly doo here. But we we did record it was a like podcast two years ago. Yeah, we had matching semiaka yeah. yeah. and yeah, it's really very cute. Very well planned. Thank yeah. You. I'll see you guys in two years, so we'll be you. here that <laughs> maybe. Or sooner, please. I mean, yeah, I'd prefer yeah. that. And, you know, you can catch <laughs> Ellie on her own podcast, which I will link to. And where else can we find you? Ooh. I am, yeah, have got the Skein and Its podcast on YouTube. I go by Skein there on Instagram. Uh, my designs are under Skein and Its on Ravelry. And I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a short list. So, awesome. yeah. 
Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe below. Um, and again, this was not the normal format of the <laughs> podcast because, you know, friends, we tend to deviate on the format, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, I'll be back with another episode for you, normal episode, next week. So, happy knitting, happy making, happy sewing. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>